Good morning, everyone. My name is pastry chef Maria Kemp, and I am the sole employee and owner of Beyond Decadence Incorporated. I graduated the French Pastry School in Chicago in 2007. After spending many years in the corporate world, I decided to transition. I just moved to Huntersville from the normal Illinois area in 2017, and I've been loving it ever since. When I moved to here, Beyond Decadence became Lake Norman's first and only pop-up bakery. So that was the business model that we started and have been following ever since. Now, all pop-up bakery means is there's no storefront location for customers to come to. We did pop-up events very aggressively in the Charlotte and Lake Norman area to bring awareness and exposure to our brand and to begin to build a following. As we began to become popular and known for our desserts and the quality, the American gluten-free and French desserts created a demand for dessert catering and to also open up servicing corporate clients as well as retail clients. Slide. Now, where things changed when COVID-19 happened is we first started by doing same-day orders. What I mean by that is order would be in by 8 o'clock, and we would bake it, cut it, cool it, package it, and deliver it for free in the same day. Now, customers were very happy, of course, but that um, was not a real, excuse me, realistic business model for us to continue to follow. Now, the reason that we also had to do that, do that is because we're not in a storefront location, so we don't have curbside or takeout available as an option. So all those factors led to very unpredictable revenue for us to try and gauge how many customers were going to contact us on a given day trying to do same day orders. So that was not financially or physical sustainable for us to sustain. About two weeks ago, I launched a free Facebook Live baking demo. And that's building a lot of tractions where I'm teaching people how to do different desserts, just whatever ones that I come up with and they're watching them on Facebook Live for free. On March 31st, I launched paid online classes, baking classes that were chef led. They were geared toward children, but we also had adults attended too. Now, currently that education is not focused on holiday focused desserts. It's just focused on the basic baking skills and specific skills of how to make different desserts. Now we feel that online is sustainable regardless of what the government orders happen to change the stay at home orders if that escalates and it's also sustainable for a one person operation. Slide. Oops. Now, the effectiveness of our pivot, the free Facebook videos are gaining a lot of traction, especially the ones where I'm doing something with wine or alcohol. They get a lot of views and people are sharing those. Adults are watching those by themselves. They're also making it a little bit of a family event and watching it with their children. Where we need to pick up traction is with our online classes. Now, we are doing those and we're getting happy customers that say they're going to write reviews, but our enrollment is still low, so we're looking to grow that number. The challenge with the online classes is I realize there's a lot of free content available on YouTube and every celebrity chef is doing a free video. How are we different? We're doing on-demand classes so people can take them on their time or they can enter a private Facebook watch party where they get the chef to answer questions real time. Now we might, we're also adding an option for private one-on-one -on -one baking sessions. So if people have specific knowledge they wanna obtain. What we feel we're missing and what this funding would allow us to do is to add a comprehensive option for delivery of ingredients. So we would deliver ingredient kits. So when people are ready to take the class, they have everything that they need and also some website optimization. The use of the funds, well, I've got a long laundry list, so I'd have to prioritize. Tripod, microphone, lighting, so the videos can be of even better quality. Looking at the software upgrades and website enhancements, going through this list of items and seeing which one makes the most sense and where we're going to get the most return. A graphic designer to build out some of the online courses, printing, everything would need to be printed and packaged if we do the ingredient kits and the social media optimization. And, um, and delivery service. So that would relieve me from doing the delivery. The effect of the pandem pandemic has been huge. It's moved us from doing uh, bake from scratch, deliver, 
or excuse me, bake from scratch business where people were ordering in advance to same day delivery, which was not realistic or sustainable. All the events that we had with our corporate clients canceled until further notice and all the retail clients are being cautious in what, you know, what they're, what they're willing to do or able to do at this point. We've, we've secured this funding. We'd be really excited because it would allow us to make those changes to our online environment because that's all new for us for doing the classes anyway. We've had online already, but not online classes so we can stay sustainable and viable until this pandemic is over. Thank you. All right, so big silent Zoom applause for you, Chef. Thank you. Uh, so great job. And let's go ahead and get all of the panelists' cameras back on. It looks like we're ready. And uh, Chris, we'll start with you. Hey, awesome. Uh, great job. Great job, Chef. Um, so have there been any, uh, you know, disruptions to your own kind of supply chain for getting uh, the ingredients? Um, has there been any challenges associated with that? No, and the reason for that is I'm still a smaller business, so I'm still getting things from just local retailers. I'm not at the point. I've had a brick and mortar bakery 10 years ago out of, out of pastry school, um, but I'm not at the point where I'm using like your Cisco's, your GFS, or your big suppliers. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. And is the following, is it fair to say, is the following relatively local? I mean, all all within the kind of no, actually, Charlotte region? Yeah, no, actually it's not because I'm from Illinois. I moved to a different town called Normal, Illinois. That's really the name <laughs> of the town. But I went to pastry school in Chicago and I've lived, you know, several different places. So I have Facebook fans who are still following me from those other states. And when I do the Facebook lives, you know, they're getting notified and they're sharing them. Like I said, the ones with alcohol or wine, they do best and, you know, get a lot of views. So I'm using that free those free Facebook lives to stay connected, to give back to the community, but also it brings awareness to the paid classes that I also have available. And that yeah. can be, that could be global. <laughs> yeah. And how are you, you know, how are you driving awareness and how do you see like driving, you know, continued awareness uh, to, to the classes? Um, mm -hmm. Are there any kind of unique ways that you're thinking of, of marketing? Well, yeah, I was just on Fox this morning, Fox 46, so I got to mention it there, and I'm going to be on WVTV tomorrow, so I'm going to mention it there as well. I've been on those stations before, so it's an established relationship, but also I'm very um, aggressive with social media. You know, I think everybody is right now, so trying to make yours stand out more than somebody else's is the challenge, but the social media side as well as email marketing, um, in addition, those would be the main things that I would do. Um, I did uh, talk through, a, through a, a, a connection, did um, a video for the town of Cornelius Park and Rec's department. So they also had me do a baking demo and I got to mention in there that I have classes as well. Because I think there's a large body of children from all ages that are home, cooped up, bored out of their minds that could benefit from learning the basics of kitchen skills and baking. And and, then, and the last question, just so when this is all when this is all said and done, um, you know, do you do you plan on continuing continuing this? Do you see it as you know, kind of eating into any of the time that it takes to run your your more traditional kind of pop up business, or is it something that that sort of enhances it? Well, I think it enhances it because I've taught before, you know, I taught when I lived in Illinois and I think maybe one other state as well and, and baking classes at that. And people are always asking me to teach. Um, and it's something I like and I, I enjoy. So I would like to continue to continue doing that. And my vision is for it to be, I, I say automated a little bit cautiously because the videos can be recorded unless people are opting for that one-on-one -on -one time with me to run it as a Facebook watch party where I have to actually be in the group, then they're actually, it, it's automated. They're buying the class online. They're watching it on their own time. And if they opt not to purchase an ingredient kit because they want to get it on their own, there's very little of my time needed for that to run. It could just run while I'm running the other part of my business. So I would not like it to go away at all. I would love to continue to grow it. Great, thanks. You're welcome. And Maria, have you thought about any other channels um, to try this out and different types of classes? It, it seems to me like there's um, this is an opportunity for customer discovery right now. You mentioned that you're 
wine and alcohol classes, um, Facebook Live are a big hit. Um, it may be a time to try different types of classes and see which ones are better than others and then which um, different channels are better than others. You have things like, you know, you said the Facebook Live, you have all these different um, platforms for online classes, you have SkillPop. Um, ha are, what types of different um, channels do you think that you'll, you'll try uh, to be able to see which, which works best for you? I think it's going to be a little bit of trial and error. Yeah. And I'm familiar with skill pop as well. And, and I know, you know, there are other businesses doing similar, you know, there's some of their product lines are a little bit different. Um, but I think it's going to be trial and error. I mean, I basically put this all together within the last you know, two weeks. I think it's been about, about two weeks and develop classes, recording them and seeing which ones get traction and which ones don't, and then cut them from there. I've tried surveying and doing polls with my um, Facebook fans and people aren't always real responsive with polls or give you as the, the inf as much information you know as you need. Uh, I think one of the initial ones I ran, I saw that you know people did like the classes geared toward adults. It was only like eight responses, so you know that's a little bit. You know what do you do with that? Um, but that's that's what I can do is I can I can do polls, I can do trial and error, or do a little snippet of a class and see if people bite and are interested without giving away, you know, the whole hour long class, maybe a 15 second snippet. I thought that's what the Facebook live videos would do. And those are also on YouTube as well. And they're on my website. So they're in a lot of different places. So a lot of different people can see them. Sure. And what do you think in terms of, you know, if, if life goes back to more closer to normal than, you know, what do you feel like this, you'll continue this, keep this as part of it, go back to the same day delivery? How do you see that impact? No, I don't want to go back to same day delivery. I mean, I'm baking to order and that was just, that was just not realistic for, for my business. You know, being a, you know, I said it in my presentation, I'm a one person operation. So being, doing the same day was just, it was, it was not, not a good idea, but I would like to keep the classes. I would definitely like to keep those because they can run on their own, as I was mentioning before. Um, unless people want the ingredients delivered, if they're just taking it on their own, and that will just be another side of my business. Jeff, do you want to sneak a question in there? Yeah, yeah, Chef, you mentioned that um, that you part of the funds were going to be used to fulfill deliveries. Um, so is there a reason that you can't just make a Amazon list or, or a Harris Teeter grocery list or something like that and just let them be responsible to pick up their own ingredients or have them shipped to them? Are, are, are you profiting off of that? Is that the reason why you want to fulfill the deliveries? I feel like the delivery, I, I, the delivery pieces, I feel like the piece that I'm, that I'm missing right now. Um, I know there are a lot of businesses doing like the DIY cupcake kits, the DIY cookie kits, and they're delivering those or they're doing take uh, or pickup or curbside pickup. So people have everything they need, you know, to do that. So yeah, I'm in some mastermind groups and that was one of the things that was suggested there. I, it, being content only is a very competitive market with everybody in the content only space. But if I'm giving you all the tools that you need um, at a you know at a price, I could offer them through through Amazon or just do you here's your Instacart list. You know here's what you need. Here's your mm -hmm. shopping list. That would be my preference. I'm just trying to figure out is it the ingredients missing right in front of somebody that's missing, or are they not picky on how they get it, whether it's from me or on their own? Does that well, make sense? Yeah, and, and just, uh, I was just going to say, just wanted one word answer on this. What's the uh, price point for the class? Fifteen dollars for one hour. Thank you. Thank All you. right, and then one quick question from the audience: capacity issues. Uh, if this were to dramatically grow, how would you, how would how long would it take to revamp operations to sustain this? For the classes, was that the question for the classes? Yes. Oh, okay. I think. Well, the classes, once the classes are developed right now, I'm using uh, private Facebook groups for those. But as it grows, you know, I could also move that into Zoom as well. So that's really just limited by the capacities of the platform. The information, uh, the, the class is pre-recorded. If people are opting to do it on demand, they watch it whenever they want. Uh, if they're opting for a watch party and I'm in that to answer their questions, start and stop the video and answer questions real time, then uh, you know that's a little different, but it's the limitations of the platforms. It wouldn't be my limitation. All right, thank you, Chef. Big uh, silent applause, Zoom applause for you there. And um, we are uh, wish you all the best of luck.